Yo, here we go. Back at it again. Doug Smith alongside my man, my homie, my co-homie, Will Lowry. Another episode Beyond the Fairway podcast right here. Golf Channel NBC. Hey, if you haven't heard Beyond the Fairway, we bring a point of view from a different clubhouse, man. We'll go beyond the scores and highlights, and we discuss the game of golf, its barriers for minorities, and this emerging new culture. I know you feel it, because I do too. Hey, coming up on this week's episode, Will and I are joined by the first black golfer to earn her LPGA Tour card through the Symmetra Tour, and former big breaker, like my homie Will. Uh, Sedina Parks is coming in here, Will. Man, how excited are you to to get Sedina up in here, man? I, I know, man, because uh, last time I played with her, she I was out driving her by five yards, I think. So, I mean, it's She's a little long, bit of, though. Sedina's long. It is. It is. So, it's it's a little bit of a... It's, I, I'm at a little cognitive dissonance, her coming. Yes, I'm happy she's here, but... I hope she roasts you. Uh, I, I, she probably is, because she's, she's almost as quick as me. But mm. think about it. She got a little more freedom, because she's a guest. I can't say everything I want to say, so... Yeah, but hey, yeah. before we get to that uh, interview, definitely a big week in golf some of the saddest news that we've all heard hey we might be late reporting it here you already know you've already heard uh the goat not even going to use his name the goat here on beyond the fairway we i will prefer to tiger woods as just the goat um facts and and the goat was um unfortunately a victim of a single car accident there down in california as he was going off to shoot some things uh for some media and will when i got the news man i feel like i i feel like it was it was one of those monumental days yeah. Um, where you knew where you were when you heard the news. Like, I got a phone call. I was driving yeah. on the way to course, and it was like, yo, the GOAT had had a misfortune. Where were you, and, and how did you take the news? Well, I was uh, I was uh, playing um, Sage Valley with uh, Chris Spencer, a uh, former guest. And was Ben there? Was Ben with no, you? Ben, ben went to Augusta, believe it or not. But we'll talk about that later. But uh, I, I have to say, man, you know, it was a little eerie when I got the news because it kind of reminds you of – you got to think we're only a month removed from the anniversary of Kobe's Kobe's passing. Mm. And so when when I heard that, it was almost like not again. Like I, it was almost like a, 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 a side to God, like not again, not right now. Yeah. And yeah. and so uh, you know, it sparked some conversation. Where were you at at um, some of these monumental in, individuals when they um, when they passed? And I was on a mm. golf course, all of them, which is unfortunate. Yeah. So that right there just brought some uh, internal feelings that I didn't want to I didn't want to face. Yeah, not going to stay too much time here, but definitely want to wish the GOAT well. Hey, I got my red shirt on. I had it on yesterday. Uh, we we wish you all the love and support. And we will honor your wishes, Tiger, because you asked for privacy. So I'm going I'm to do my best job to keep it private for you, homie. So get Absolutely. better uh, and, and do your thing. Also, speaking of another GOAT, Will, LPGA Tour, you had yes. uh, you had Annika Sorenstam <laughs> blow the dust off the clubs, you know what I'm saying? And she went out there and showed them girls something this week. You know, the thing about Annika, I'm not surprised that she made the cut because when I saw her at the Don Resort, she looked like she was a, she was focusing, like she was yeah. she was in tune. It wasn't about celebrity the glamour and glitz saying hello to the crowd yeah. or whatever. She was really focusing. I think what did it for me was I saw her come off her round yeah. and I saw her go back to the range and practice. Oh, yeah, I saw her. Running. Yeah, I saw her coach there. I'm like, this is not somebody. This is this is not typical of someone who's just in a celebrity yeah. status. So yeah. uh, when, when I found out she was making she was making a start this week, I was excited, and I'm not. I'm I'm happy that I'm not too surprised that she made the cut. Not at all. I feel like when you when you reach that level of success, you just, there's certain like neural pathways. Yeah, I said it. That just let you get back in that mode and play back at the level that sh that you used to be at not the not the week she wanted overall but Annika showed a lot of poise uh making the cut this week even though it was her home crib like it was it was her home crib of course it was but but speak, speaking speaking of what speaking of another thing that was dope uh that uh, Annika is in the stats on uh Jessica and Nelly Corda mm. back to back wins on the LPGA tour how you like how we think about that i just want to say this and and shout out to Jessica and Jessica and Nelly. Uh Janelli is what I almost said. Yeah. That's what all right, it's Janelli Quarter. That's what we're gonna call it. But what's cool is they won back to back events as sisters. Uh and the previous sisters to do that were the Soren Sam sisters. I, absolutely. Way back in the day. Not way back, but it was a few years ago. Yeah. But you know what? I'll tell you one thing about Jessica and Nelly. I put their swing on my I have downloaded their swings and I put mm -hmm. them in Rincey's crib. And he just watches them all day long, That's every perfect. day. Like the thing, if because I want him to swing like that, absolutely. And you, but you know, another thing what I really admire about the win, um, 
when uh, Miss Corder she she did her uh, her her post interview, she said, uh, "I was trying to get back to the Diamond Resort." She had so <laughs> she had and that was one thing that stuck out to me. You know, it was cool that she just wanted to see you. She just wanted to see you, right? What you, me me and probably all, all the all the handsome guys <laughs> out there who are athletes got abs and six pack strapping. But uh, but kudos to, kudos to uh, Mike Flasky, CEO of Diamond Resort, for putting on such a, a great event for an LBGA player to say, my goal, well, I'm more happy about me winning. I get to go back to the LBGA Tour Tournament Champion. So that right there was, was amazing. That was a good interview for sure. Well, I'll say this. I have a new favorite professional golfer. And Ooh. he's all of 24 years old in Colin Morikawa, this week's winner yes. of the Workday WGC or, um WGC Workday. Um, wow, this kid, this kid got it, man. He got. There's yeah. no other way to describe it. He got it. He's a big time player. Talking about a bounce back after a bogey tournament <laughs> for missing the cut at uh, at at, at uh, Riviera to come back and win the WGC. That's that tells you that this kid is is probably going to make a, a strong footprint in his game. He's real deal. He's real deal. But hey, enough of what's happening. It's already happened. Let's get to this week's episode with Sedina Parks. It's time to go Beyond the Fairway. Let's do it. She can't outdrive me, Doug. Beyond the Fairway podcast welcomes in one of my favorite professional golfers of all time, Sedina Parks. What's going on? How you doing? Oh, it's man. Pissing. I'm actually I'm happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here uh, hanging out with the two guys that I don't hang out with the most. So I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. How are you guys doing? Man, no, no complaints. You know, we sit here. Uh, we're glad to have you. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a iconic moment in beyond the fairway history right now. Cause you are That's the right. first, the first black woman to ever grace the box of beyond the <laughs> fairway. I and love so, it. So therefore, Doug and I, we welcome you wholeheartedly, all the whole crew at Beyond the Fairway, who you just met prior, and we thank you for being here. So I'm going to jump right into it. Very first question, yeah. um, and I think I'm speaking for the people with this one, is that we, as fans, want to know, how was it being on the LBGA Tour as a black woman, one of the, uh, the fifth one? the fifth black person on the LPGA tour. Yeah. Um, how was that? Just give, give us a quick rundown. How was that? That could be an all day question, right? Um, Let it's it a out. Lot. It's, it's, a lo it's a lot, but it's, it's the experience. Um, it's fun. I had so much fun traveling. I, I mean, I've been to, I went to France to play golf. Um, I went overseas to New Zealand. I played amongst the best. Um, I had Michelle Wee making fun of me, the fact that I don't wear socks, you know, on the course. We just, we created a, we created a, like a union out there and we, and we tried our best to balance it because we're all competing against one another, but we all realized that we're all human at the same time. So it was fun. It was chill. Um, missed it a little bit. I was going to say, uh -huh. tears, tears streaming, tears. streaming down your face. Streaming. Look. Well, look, I want to go back a little bit, Sadina, because, you know, looking up some, some info about you, what I found to be amazing is just this, your your rise from the Symmetra Tour to the LPGA Tour. When you think back, you had a couple wins. I think you won twice in a span of three weeks uh, there in 14 on the Symmetra Tour, tour debut uh, in 2015. Tell us a little bit about how that transition was from, you know, being such a, a champion and, and, and top 10 into the LPGA tour. How was that transition for you into the LPGA? That's a really good question. Like, well, I would say when I was playing at my best, when I was killing it on the Symmetra tour, you know, I was, I mean, be honest with you, golf is a self-indulged sport. You know, I was really, really self-indulged. I was really committed in what Sedina needed to be the best. So, I mean, practice was all about me. Fitness was all about me. What I wanted to wear was all about me. When I wanted to go out to practice was all about me. And, and I made it all about me um, just because that was the ultimate goal. Um, you have to kind of be self-indulged in this game to propel. And once I made it, you know, out on tour, it was different. It was a little bit different, you know. It was like, okay, well, now you have people coming at you that want to sponsor you, that want to help you. And I kind of lost track of, for me, I was like, I need to do this for my family. And now I'm here. I need to do this for the sponsors, make sure that they're happy. You know, and I lost all full track of 
how I got there in the first place and what helped me. So, but um, the transition again was, it was pretty fun. It was pretty different. I didn't have the experience. My dad didn't understand, you know, how to look for an agent or look for this or that. I had no experience. So it was kind of a, a eye opener for me um, for the next time that I wanted to perform or to give someone advice that's like younger than me in college or whatever. I, I knew exactly how to to propel and engage them and help them understand, you know, these are the paths that you have to go and you have to have the right team with you to do that. So, so, um, what, what type of advice would you give? I know you kind of touched on just now the, the team, but what type of advice would you give? You can give a little more detail on that. Um, it, you have to be, and it's like something that, you know, Nisha always tells me you have to be hungry. Um, and you have to figure out what that hunger is for you. You have to find it. And if it's you're doing it for a certain reason, find that certain reason and make it happen. Golf is a really confident and committed sport. Um, you can't go in half half ass. So that's kind of my my tip on that. Um, I can go greater in detail, but it's just based off the person, really. It really is. So, so Dina, when you got to the tour, you know, you played a few seasons there and, you know, Will and I, everybody kind of rooted for you, but it feels like either the game left you or you just kind of lost interest in, in being out there. How was kind of that transition for you once you made it to what seemed like your goal was? Yeah, you know, and it goes back into what I was saying. I, I did lose interest in the game. I think I lost interest on the purpose of why we're out there to play. Um, to be honest, there wasn't much help. There wasn't much information or guidance. They kind of just wanted you to go out there and just play and don't don't think about anything. And my mindset, my purpose was bigger than that. I wanted to grow the game um, on a different level. Like I wanted to get more juniors in the game. I wanted to get more women in the game. And I want to create more diversity in the game. And for some reason, if I, I didn't have the right team around me, which I'm kind of blessed that I'm now at PGD Global, because I have people who are like-minded as myself that's trying to grow the game in a different way. I think by me playing the way that I was playing and the, and the, the team that I had around me and the efforts that were being made for me to perform, to be the next, to bring more light into the game, wasn't, I didn't have it and, I, and I'm impatient. I didn't have that team around me. So I'm like, well, what can I do to make an impact? Because right now, I'm not, I don't feel like I wasn't, you know? Well, well, Sadina, well, Sadina, you're you're still young. You're you're, you're 30 years old. Um, just you put just on for ass like that, will you? I know, I know, but, that's like... I know, but but just just for the, there go that bus that that Doug just ran ran over me just now. <laughs> hey, um, just just for the record, are you still are you done with the game officially? Is there a spark that might come back? Because uh, I know I know your friends Shasta. Uh, Cheyenne, they're still grinding. They're still trying to make it happen. Is there any type of, um, I guess, spark when you see those guys still try to push forward? Are you still have that? Uh, yeah, no, for sure. I think right now, because of my purpose and my motive, I just don't have the time. But do I want to play a Monday qualifiers? Yes. I mean, I know I still have it. I know I'm still capable of playing and, and winning tournaments and winning majors. If you know, uh, based off the practice and my mindset and what I can put myself to, to, to do. But right now, I, I just know that my purpose right now is to, it will make me happy if I'm able to, to bring more light and more diversity and more inclusion and unity in the game. I feel like there's so much separation and it bothers me. It bothers me to where I'm like trying to figure out my ultimate purpose while I'm, while I'm out there. So I think it's kind of, for me, it's a balance. I need both in order to, to do it, to do all Well, I find it interesting, though, Sadina, because it seems like when you're out playing and people can see you and touch you and hear from you, that that's also growing the game. Because I'm sure there's been events where little brown girls or, 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 or women with varying backgrounds or struggling with sexual identity have, have come up to you and, and said, hey, like, I see you and I want to be like you. Do, you. do you miss that? Like, did you feel like that, that role model in, in those moments? I, I did, um, and I still do. Um, I think there's different role models, and I think I can be 
both on and off. I mean, I, I admire LeBron, what he's doing in the games, like stuff like that. I feel like, you know, for me right now, my biggest impact is connectivity and I'm inside the ropes. There's not so much connection. It's just like, mm. you know, like self-centered and that's fine. Um, I'm good at that too. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I want to be more interactive and I want to say my piece. And I haven't been able to inside the ropes just because everyone around me is just telling me to focus on golf, focus on playing, go out and practice. And, and I, I, I think there's more to me that people should, you know, I, I want to put out there that hasn't been put out there yet. What you, were you speaking on being more interactive? Um, and you just spoke on PGD global. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so I'm with um, PG Global now. Um, I'm doing national golf partnerships with them. And it's really, really awesome since, you know, this whole pandemic, there's been some, you know, um, issues that we've all noticed with, you know, diversity and inclusion and also female empowerment. And what I've been doing is reaching out to, you know, everyone that I can, um, every golf association that I can who has the same like-minded as us, who wants to grow the game and who wants to see this game be somewhere else 10 years from now. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been very, very enlightening just to know that people understand and people are willing to make some changes to grow their organization or you know, to grow their brand or whatever it may be. And that's kind of what I've been doing is making sure that everybody knows that we're all on the same page. How do we make this happen? How do we bring it to fruition? Yeah, but doesn't it piss you off, though, that there might be some some folks that you feel like should be involved and, and, and push forward, and then they're like, nah, we good, especially, you know, on the women's side of the game? Because I feel like women just don't get the just do in golf. I mean, we're still – I read a stat years ago that if you compare um, Christy Kerr's record with a – she would equate to be the female Dustin Johnson – Okay. Um, but if you look at their overall career earnings, it it's not even a comparison. It's actually quite right. just embarrassing. So the, so when you're out there and you're talking to, to businesses and you're trying to grow the game, do you experience this level of disappointment as well with the lack of involvement from certain people? Oh yeah, I mean, and but it's not disappointing in a way where I'm not like not used to it. Um, and going back to Christy Kerr, you know, and and Dustin Johnson, it's again, it's the voice. Like, and that's what I was trying to explain to you. Yeah, we're inside the ropes, but we don't have a space to speak. We don't have a space to do a voice. We don't have a space to do what Ricky Fowler and, and, and those guys do when they make their own music videos and do something goofy. Like, we just don't have that. And we're not presented with that because we're always told just to look pretty and go play. Um, so, yeah, it is, it is. It's not, like, frustrating. It's not uncommon. Um, but that's my job. That's my job to help enlighten and help open your eyes to understanding the importance of the game of growth. Like we can't from 10 years now and everybody's transferring to a more unified, collective, happy, fun, go getty like environment. And because of your ego and your mindset, you decide to stay 10 years back. And, you know, and that's what it is. Like, I'm kind of like, one of those people that are really deep rooted when it comes to this stuff. And I know a lot of egos involved. Mm -hmm. Everyone Absolutely. has an ego. Mm -hmm. Everyone can't get rid of the ego. And I chose to get rid of mine over the pandemic. And I feel I, everything, there's nothing that can upset me. There's nothing that can bother me because I understand, I try to understand people and myself a little bit better. So you mentioned about having a voice, um, you know, who, who Hmm. I guess what companies can kind of, you know, I guess want to be a better ally to helping you gra uh, grab that voice. Who, 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 what can companies do to, to help better your, uh, your mission? I mean, there's a ton of companies. I, I mean, right now I can say PGD global, and I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm now working for PGD global, but as a team collectively, I feel like we're the only people in the game that's, making the effort, you know, um, a lot of people talk, but don't walk. And I'm, and we've been walking, we've, we've already had, um, the trailblazers event which running is, in some cases, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're sprinting <laughs> to the finish <laughs> line because, you know, I'm not, a, I'm, I can be funny. You guys know that I'm a, I'm a comedian on the side, but when it comes to what I'm, what I really want 
to see efforts of change and purpose. It's not funny to me. So when it comes to like a lot of people that really want to see a difference, it's not a funny matter. It's not a comedic matter. You can't speak on, you know, and, and speak on certain things that we already know. How about we speak on things that we don't know and that we're not having enough conversations about and progress from there because it's only educated because if we repeat the same things that we already know, there's no learning involved, there's no education involved, and let alone there's no improvement. So um, what PGD Global has been doing is we started the Trailblazers Virtual Golf and Lifestyle Classic. It's amongst all of us women um, that are of color that are in the game who played from junior to collegiate to pro level. Um, so we've been through the whole thing and I feel like we're kind of trailblazing the way to educate you what's going on inside and outside and based off our whole experiences. And from you guys, you guys already know the routes. You guys know the routine. You guys understand, you know, um, sponsors turning you down for certain reasons or not sponsoring for certain reasons. I mean, all three of us are really, really, really good players and really good athletes. We grew up playing in this game and, and accomplishing like really high end um, stuff uh, in the game. And being able to be here and speaking on that is very powerful in itself. So it's like, you know, right now we're not like striving and wanting recognition. We just want a space to speak and talk about things that we normally don't talk about. Yeah. Well, I find it interesting, though, Sadina, because I looked up some information about you, and I went way back, because you and Will are also big breakers here on NBC Golf Channel, which I, they, I, I didn't get my call. I'm, I'm a little upset I tried out and failed. But what I found interesting and in kind of reading back through your bio is that back in the day, you're a multi-sport athlete. You're unbelievably athletic, but your parents, you actually had conversations with them about this notion of being a trailblazer. So what I found really cool was that you also led the effort, part of this effort for the trailblazer event as you spoke. What is it? What is it that it means to you? Because again, your father planted in his seed that, Sedina, you are going to trailblaze. And then you end up doing an event as a trailblazer. How's that feel, and how can we learn more about the trailblazer event? Yeah. Um, well, one word I can put is patience, because nothing happens overnight. So this has been, yeah, since I was little, this has been my whole goal and my whole journey. Um, and the trailblazers is, is a, it's, it's a bigger picture, right? It's to show that us girls, nine girls want to come together and be able to help trailblaze the way for the next trailblazers. We want to make sure that the girl who, um, from an HBCU, so we also, we do want to choose um, an African-American with two, two women that are of minority descent to play and have the funds to go through Q school. So we're going to fund her whole way through Q school, making sure that she, um, we want to get to. That's our whole goal. Um, we do have one, and we're going to definitely make sure that we choose the right one. Um, but more or less, we want to unify it, um, us as, as, as a whole. We do understand that we're a small knit circle um, out on tour, on the Symmetra and LPGA tour, and we do want to help pave the way. Um, we do want to create confidence and bond within ourselves, so understand ourselves through this whole journey as well. And the closer that we are, the close knit that we are, the better that we, we want to see the confidence within ourselves and to perform and see us more on the leaderboard and see our faces up there and and be able to speak and uh, um, on our journey and speak where we want to head to and, and be in the limelight. You know, um, we work just as hard as everybody else. We grind, we wake up, we work out. Um, we stay out on the golf course for hours and it's got to the point where it's like our purpose, what is our purpose again? And right. we have a bigger purpose. We have yeah. a huge purpose that we want to be involved in. 
Now, well, see, I want to go back just a touch because we did talk about, you know, sponsorships and those types of things when you were playing golf. Let me ask, you know, when we talk about diversity and inclusion, a lot of black folk just think about race like I do. I'm, I'm guilty of thinking diversity and inclusion of bring in the black folk. Like, where are we at? Like, so, you know, when we talk about diversity and inclusion, we're also talking about um, those disabled folks, uh, those with uh, varying sexual identities. I want to talk about being not just a black woman, but a, a gay black woman in golf that that had to it's already a hurdle being black it's another hurdle to be a black woman mm -hmm. it's another even another hurdle to be considered as gay so my question for you is what all did you have to fight for because it sounds like you had to do a lot of swinging out there just to get between those ropes yeah i mean that's a good question i wasn't prepared for that question um but you know it's it it's something that I've experienced and that I had my own fights with, but not in a bad way. It was more of loving who I am because yeah, I've had a few people that didn't want to sponsor me just because of my sexuality. Mm, that's um, horrible. That's and, bullshit. It's terrible, man. Well, it's horrible, and, man. And yet I'm an African American girl who they haven't seen do anything great out there yet. Let's be real. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're waiting for our first win. We're waiting for a lot of things. And it's it's kind of testy for people it's kind of a risk for others um to step into that light not knowing what they're going to get out of it not knowing how i may react how i may respond how i may look for how i may look if i'm connected to their brand so i kind of tend to my hair's all over the place um <laughs> i kind of tend and, and i'm and i'm into fashion so what i do is i show that on the course. I show mm. my swag, I show my sexuality, I show my personality through fashion. Um, and I hope that attracts people, especially people who struggle with what I struggle with, to know that you can still be yourself, you can still be unique. I mean, we're all built from a different cloth. I know I'm beyond, beyond different, but I think if you are willing to step outside the box and do something creative, that's where greatness begins. I mean, nothing begins inside the box and i always refer to who built the first airplane people thought he was crazy i'm sure uh, mm -hmm. metal but our brains our minds are strong objects even tesla you know he did something out of this world you know it's just stuff like that that's what i'm gravitating to that's what i want to do i don't want to be normal i don't want to be the average joe i don't want to be inside the box so i tend to do stuff that's a little bit different and it's a bit testy for some brands companies because that's what they're accustomed to yeah and i'm they, trying to they don't want to be dope they don't want to be dope they don't want to be dope like you know no, what i'm no. saying like you know what sadina i was wondering how can the game position itself better to receive and foster members of the lbgt community for the future um Gosh, that's a good question. I feel like, honestly, it's the same thing. It's unity, it's inclusion, and we're not speaking about it enough. Um, there's a lot of people of the LGBT community that love the game, um, that aren't noticed, that aren't recognized, just because they do feel like there is a separation. They are separated from the game. They feel like they're not included. And if they are included, they do it within themselves they don't want to really make it a, 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 a outright scene just because golf is such a tight knit community sport. It's always been done a certain way and it's the respect of the game. We don't want to come in bombarding it. So how do we include it? That's a really good question. I think we just have to speak more about it um, outside the ropes. Um, you know, I can't speak for other girls, but I do know that's never the top of conversation and 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 on inside the ropes at all so and i think we learned to steer away from that just based off of the people that do support the game wholeheartedly it's a sensitive topic well you know what we're on this diversity <clears throat> conversation and 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 i love like this is this is like my hot button so i'm like ready to get into the diversity conversation but you know what i'm sick of the efforts sadina and i'm sick of people trying to do things to make golf 
more inclusive. You, uh, PGD, what you guys are doing, you guys are doing it. You're bringing golf to people that don't play golf. So when we talk about the clubhouse and the different events like the Mike's Phillips Jazz on the Green, uh, tell me a little bit about what you guys do to reach outside of the usual golf watcher to bring people in because I've heard multiple people that don't even play golf hit me up like, yo, that, that, that event was dope. So what is it that you guys are doing to like bring in everybody? I mean, it's just this, as simple as what you just said. We're bringing everybody in. It's, it's, just, it's just that simple. Um, there's a lot of people out in this, this universe, this world that play golf. Like, let's be real. I, I, I don't know anybody that I have come across. Like, Will Smith, out of all people, just loves to play the game, and his family does too. But those people, his fans, the, uh, uh, the people that follow him or her or wh whatever the, you know, these limelights that love the game, like a Michael Jordan as well, how do we get those fans helping them to understand the game? I think they don't understand the game enough. So what we do is we make everybody loves music, everybody loves sports, everybody loves um, connection, community, and we just brought it all in one. Um, so with that said, we make it slight golf centric. Like if we're talking, if we're going to bring a Mike Phillips who actually lives, sleeps, drinks golf, we're going to bring him and make sure that he plays his jazz music. Everybody loves jazz. And then he talks about golf uh, a little bit. He brings golf back in just to add those touches. So we're trying to teach the game and bring people in the game in a different way and kind of backwards a little bit. We're starting with I love music. That. Like yeah, I, when I absolutely. play golf with you guys, I'm listening to music. I'm jamming out. Mm -hmm. you, you, you damn sure jam. You do, because you, you're I, a dancer. We know I'm, that. I'm a dancer. I love to dance, <laughs> for sure. Um, but, like, that's, that's what I'm saying. It, it's just that people try to make things more complicated than they actually is. Like, we don't have to make fun of people who try to get in the game or make fun of people who are already in the game. It's, it's old news. It's not funny anymore, okay? It's just weird comedy. Yeah. How do we that, do it where it just lure, it lures people in to where it's like, Shit, I want to go out there and I want to hit a golf ball. Not, haha, I want to make fun of golf and who's been playing in it. I actually want to go out there. You've inspired me to go out there and go play or go to Top Golf. I've never been. I've heard great things about it. just little stuff like that. And that's the thing I'm, I'm kind of frustrated about with people in, the, in our community that say they want to grow the game. Why are they not doing it in, in the way of understanding that? It's a unity thing. It's not about you. It's not about yourself. It's about everybody else. Take everybody. yourself out of it. Take yeah, ego absolutely. out of it. And the, and that's kind of what I'm trying to slowly, you know, reach out to people and help them understand. Do you, do you feel that um, this notion of everybody getting in the diversity inclusion space? Do you feel that's become more of a business than coming from a genuine place? Uh, some, you know. I think it still comes from a genuine place. Like, let's be real. I, I don't think anybody, at least I hope not anybody would get into, you know, golf diversity and, and try to make a huge profit off of it. I think it's the bigger picture. I think it's to unify us all because we see separation. Over the pandemic, we saw a great amount of separation mm. um, within the whole entire world. Now, the only way that I can make an impact is obviously in the golf world, just because I know a lot about it. I'm in the space. It's so close to home. How can I be impactful? I'm, I hope that people aren't trying to make a profit, a huge profit off of, off of it. It's just an opportunity to create a, a, a community again. Yeah. And yeah. The, the more, mm -hmm. the more the people that there are, the more success will come out of it. Just this common sense. It's like the old adage in the black community. It takes a village to raise a child, right? It, it takes does. a village to raise a black golfer or a person right. from a varying background that doesn't have the access to the game. Like, I'm I'm almost pissed off, Sedina, at all the money that these ABC golf organizations have and the nothingness that they do, but yet Black History Month rolls around or, or there's one person that did something that's very mediocre it and takes, let's give them a trophy, let's give yeah. them an award. It right. takes the right. It takes the right community. I mean, and that's that's the thing. That's that's kind of you know our the tackle 
you know, we want to make sure that people have the right mindset when they're stepping in and saying, I want to help grow and create diversity in the game. And we want to make sure that you are initially trying to do that. Um, it, it, it does get frustrating with, you know, uh, uh, individuals that see as an opportunity for them to to do much of talk and not much of the walk. So right. with you guys, I see what you guys have been doing. You guys have been a huge impact um, on me lately. And I'm going to be real because, because I love the conversations that you guys have. You guys are fun when you have these conversations. It's nothing but real talk. It's not Play-Doh. I, I mean, I have I used to eat Play-Doh as a kid, but I, I don't, I'm saying, yeah. But I don't, I don't, I don't do that I'm, anymore. Um, you don't? This is, this, this is real life stuff. Why this not? Is, like, why not? That's stupid. This is, this, is, this is our lifestyle, you know? This is what's become all of us. And we're enjoying it and we're loving what we do. And I think this is what life's about. We're creating something that we enjoy to love, what we love to do. And we're bringing everybody in that loves to do the same thing and creating a, a large success community out of it. And that's the only way we're going to get done. Like, let's just be real. How are we going to get much done talking about ourselves and making a big deal out of maybe people not supporting you? Because I used to do that. I'm like, well, I play golf. I'm playing it well. If I just had a little bit more support, if I had a little bit more of this, but it comes from self. What do you want? What's, what are you hungry for? And what are you able to make happen? That's a great um, quote. And That's we, such a great and quote. It, it just, we weren't, you know, me as, as, a, as a person playing, I wasn't able to make things happen for myself because I did, fully didn't understand what I was doing it for. And that's kind of why I'm here. I know how to make things happen. I know how to bring things to fruition. And I'm doing it with the girls that I love, a team that I love. Nisha mm -hmm. and Seema, uh, they're great girls. They, they, we have, we support one another when it comes to this touchy topic. It's close to home for all of us. We all played. We all been on the side of the ropes. We all play at the highest rank. And from the outside looking in, we see some huge improvements. And, you know, with me, with the National Golf Partnerships, I've just been reaching out to everybody to help them understand the improvements that need to be made. And are you down? Um, are you are you are, are you down? down? Are you down? down? That's the slogan right there. That. We're gonna hashtag are all you that. down. Like, right. Hey, this is what we're trying to do. Are you <laughs> down. down? Exactly. You're losing. Exactly. Hey, you're losing. You're behind if you're not. But losing. You know, absolutely. No question. Everybody's I, that, losing, that's man. That's in the most polite way. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I just try to help people understand that we can't live life like this any longer. Absolutely. Hey, one, one last question before we get you out of here. I know, I know we uh, press for time. Um, yeah. If you can answer real quick, the, the, that festival on the green, Mike Phillips, that was such an innovative uh, way of, of, of growing the game. How long did that thing, how long did that take from, from womb, the thought of the idea to tomb to when that thing was completed? How long did that take? Gosh, you know, it took two and a half months okay. to put together um, Solid. and you know we built the clubhouse we built that thing to make it look like you're in the master's green yeah. we made sure that you know people felt welcome when they walk in it, it's a whole experience right it was it's not just specifically for one person you know you want somebody to walk into a room and make them feel great yeah pinpoint I, like that's like we're not here to exclude or discriminate or make someone feel like this we want everybody to feel good when we walk in the room no matter what and that's the ambience we create no matter that's the effort that we put into all of our work i mean down yeah but, to but it's work. a virtual clubhouse so you gotta actually click into it you can't actually walk hey in. that's walking not, hey right now it's not that's a place the only room that i'm can... walking into <laughs> i haven't walked into a party over a year Oh <laughs> uh, well, me, was, for me, I was walking in there. Um, I, like with all this lifts, though, Tadina, we definitely gonna have to get party and get some music playing, get the balls flying, get you, me, yo, and Will. I cannot wait to go out. Toss up whoever play. the fourth is. We oh wait, it is four. It's four right here. Sorry. So maybe we can play five somewhere if you if you know where we can do that at. Yeah. No. Like when you guys are ready, when you guys aren't working that hard anymore, because you guys are working hard now. You don't have time for me, but. We all don't have time for each other, really. But let's go out and play. Let's Come do it. Come let's do business. it. I think I think I can outdrive you now. I think. Oh. I think I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I I know I heard the cross grip takes off a lot of speed. 
Oh, so, you better watch it. You talking, girl? All right, man. Doug, wrap this up. Cause as, well, how, how you gonna talk about my speed? Doug, wrap this I think up. The cross grip is, is Doug. No, I'm gonna let her go. Wrap it up. Go ahead. Doug, wrap it up, Doug. Go we gotta ahead, go. And get it. Hey, Sadina, Duh. look, how do the folks get a hold of you? Those folks that listen to this and they want to get a hold of you, how do they find you? How do they touch you? Oh, gosh. You know, social media is not my thing, but I'm always on Instagram. So you can hit me up on Instagram. Hey, Sadina yeah. Parks, thank you so much for going beyond the fairway. I appreciate you guys. I had so much fun. Thank you. I can't she said my speed, though. My speed? <laughs> man, shout out to Sadina Parks coming through, holding it down with Will and I, man. Look, I tell you what. She's right, Will. She hits it further than you. I think you're just gonna have to let that one just That's go. a damn you, lie. That's she a damn said lie. your hands. She said your hands don't give you the speed that you could have. How she? So, who she know about my speed? She don't know about I, this vortex. I feel like I got a vortex out here, son. It's a vortex of speed. <laughs> I'm. A, <laughs> all right. All right. Hey, look. You know what? <laughs> what I do appreciate, Sedina, is you know one how 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 she just talks you know what i mean like she's she's so open to communicate with her thoughts and feelings but what i really found interesting was the fact that you can work all your life to kind of get to this pinnacle and for her the lpga tour and get there and be like i don't want to do this I'm, uh, I'm done but to think her her purpose is bigger than that you know and she she got what she needed from the tour the validation that she needed as a player so that she can go grow the game and and i'm I, it's admirable I mean, to yes. get to the pinnacle, like she made it to the top of the mountain and was like, but, this mountain sucks. I'm gonna go over that, to that one. <laughs> but that goes, that, but that, 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 that tells you how much she loves the game and she, she, the information he has about the game for her to get to that pinnacle and go ahead and say, I want to take on a new adventure with the PDG global. So she know all variety, all aspects, all the nuances yeah. around the game. And so that's what she knows how to talk about. And she's, she has big lungs. We know that, but yeah. golf is her core competency. And so there's not one person around the game that mm. can, uh, tell her or teach her something new right. about golf so no, she got it she she's a leader i think we all need to support and follow go check out pdg uh, global and see all the new and funny exciting stuff that those guys are doing yeah absolutely and sadina again thank you so much uh going beyond the fairway uh with will and i but will it's that time it's that time we got to get to it it's the shank of the week Four. The week. Hey, I got one this week, man. I know this is your segment, but I got one that I got to get off my chest. I'm going to let you start us off, and then I'm going to bring it back. No, no, don't don't let me start it off, because I, I want to hear yours with much anticipation, because I've been waiting. All right, here we go. My shank of the week. I hate to do it, but it's going to Matt. Arr! Matt Wolf, what in the world happened to you last week, Matt? Look, I love you to death. I love the swing. I even love your coach, Gigi. But look, you can't go into the WGC and just absolutely just mail it in. Guy mails it in. He mailed it in so far that he actually WD'd from the championship. It's like, Matt, you're going to get paid regardless for just staying. You don't even just finish 72 holes. I don't care what game you showed up with. I don't care how high your score is. And if you shoot 315, it doesn't matter. Just let it go. But you know what? You're a professional. You're going to make over 20 Gs for just finishing the event. All you have to do is finish. You don't care about money that much. You just, just let 25, 30 care. Gs just, just slide away. Like, no. And then to be so gone mentally, to be just have mailed it in. I said, I'm going to say it again. He mailed it in. And then goes to take a practice putt and actually nips the corner of the ball and then hits it off. And then he waited for a rules official. Like, the rule is to replace it with the shot penalty. You did, you WD'd anyway, Matt Wolf. So why are you worried about what you're going to shoot and getting the rules official when you hit the ball off the, the, the toe of the putter? So, man, Matt, you let me down, man. I love that dude. Um, but you're going to definitely get my shank of the week for, for WDing after 83. Well, well, Doug, my shank of the week um, is probably a little too early in his career to have any type of ridicule and to 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 face such mean shit like shank of the week. But damn mm. it, he's gonna get it, and Go he's ahead. on a big stage, mm. and he deserves it. My shank of the week goes to Kamayu Johnson. <laughs> Reason being, he is playing in the API this week. Last mm. week, I see Instagram photos of him with the robot. 
Why? I don't know. Why is he going through a swing change, messing with the robot on his way to one of the biggest events of the PGA Tour? Now, granted, I understand we can go about swing changes. Doug, you and I know we know golf. We know mm -hmm. golf. We know golf swing. And we know how long it takes for an individual to implement the new moves and new thoughts on a golf swing. My, I don't know what that robot is going to tell him six days before a PGA tour event, <laughs> one of the biggest ones on, on tour. So, so, uh, I don't know if his previous coach wasn't available. I doubt he, I doubt he wasn't going, he wasn't able to accept uh, Kamayu's phone call, but my shank of the week is Kamayu. If he was a whoop ambassador, I'm sure his strain is going to be severely high by the time <laughs> he gets to Friday afternoon, because I just think it's stupid for him to be on a robot. I never seen him on a robot in previous IG stories, feeds or nothing, but damn it on Saturday, Sunday, he's on a, uh, a, a, a robot trying to tweak a swing. Shank of the week goes to Kamaya Johnson. <laughs> I'm mad, man. I'm mad. That's passion right there. I love the fella, <laughs> but I'm mad, bro. You don't. That that's just something. You don't do that, bro. You just don't do it. But I, I hope. I, but I hope. I hope is this shank goes from a shank of the week to flush, flush of the week by him <laughs> making a cut. I'm, I'm hoping. Look, I, I want I him to play well. I want him to play. But to, to to fire a human being that can actually articulate what's going on to to get lessons from him. <clears throat> pre-programmed robot uh i'm with you will hey yeah whatever yeah hey. well, we'll shank see. of the week that's what it is matt wolf kamayu johnson bum, 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 bum. nope sorry that's good luck we appreciate everybody rocking with us for beyond the fairway podcast thank you so much hey instagram's where to find us beyond the fairway go ahead and at tag do all that like stuff do your thing hey subscribe download listen tell people about us we trying to grow the game like sadina so help us out help us out just a little bit but hey that's this week's episode we appreciate y'all staying with us and uh we'll be back next week you, you think the robot can give me five more miles power? <laughs>